present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. Hail. Greetings, everyone. Sieg Heil. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Uh, we are here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. I am your host. James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and this is the post uh, Thanksgiving uh, Day and Black Friday blues. Mm. Okay, it is Saturday afternoon. Black and blues. Black and blue. You know yeah. that's, that that's not bad. Black and blues. Mm. That's clever. Thank you. Yay. The post Thanksgiving Day and a Black Friday 2014 black and blues. Black and blues. Uh, recap. Okay, let me begin. Oh, first, let me introduce my uh, my partner here. Is the uh, long time my long time partner and uh, uh, illustrious uh, co-host of uh, this show, Uncensored, Hard Hitting Truth, and the very founder and managing editor of Newsletter Censored, which is the backbone of our organization. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I am waiting with bated breath to mm -hmm. eat pumpkin pie. Yeah, my sister uh, baked Reverend Bill a sugar-free pumpkin pie. I just want to tell you ahead of time, it's very mild. I like mild. It's very mild. It's bland. It's not like, you know... Uh, so not loaded with cinnamon. And it's nutmeg. not loaded. It's not loaded with anything except pumpkin. And what's the other ingredient they put in there? Evaporated cinnamon? milk. Cinnamon. Oh yeah, evaporated milk. Yeah, some milk. some cinnamon, cinnamon, but it's cinnamon, nutmeg. But it's mild. It's mild. extra mild. Ooh. So I hope you like it. You know. We'll see. You like mild food. Yes. You know where I like very oh, spicy, yeah. very spicy food. Uh, muy caliente. He likes to burn his tongue, folks. I like to, uh, yeah, I like to be a human volcano when I eat. <laughs> okay, here we go. Recap. Uh, my Thanksgiving was great since my sister's a great cook. Uh, Lisa, salute Lisa for preparing a uh, uh, wunderbar, a feast, wonderful holiday meal. And she baked, of course, uh, from scratch. Uh, I don't mean she scratched her her butt or her body over the over the pot. You know what I mean. Oh, but but anyway, um, everything was good. Uh, I uh, I o I also drank. I indulged in some spirits. I was having uh, a. It's like Bailey's Irish cream, but it, it was a like a cream of rum. It was a cream of Jamaican rum. I forgot the brand name, but I was drinking that on the rocks, on ice, and uh, that's pretty much what I had. Oh, and the homemade wine that uh, my uh, brother-in-law, uh, relative, brother-in-law's relative, his uncle brought over. Uh, it's a homemade wine made by an old Italian guy, and it was very potent and dark, Ooh. very dark, darker than <laughs> Burgundy, I think. And it was very good. It was homemade wine. It was excellent. So uh, everything went well. But now turning away from mine, uh, how was yours? Fine. I had lasagna. Okay. Did anybody, no turkey. Did anybody bring you a plate of turkey anywhere? No turkey anywhere. Well, you can always because get... Because they the people that usually supply yeah. a dish, they, uh, they, they went elsewhere. Ah, they were invited. That's, correct. That's well, you, correct. Well, you could get, technically, you can get turkey drumsticks all year round. Yeah. 
And it makes excellent soup, by the way. Or breast. Instead of chicken soup, turkey, it's cheaper than the chicken, and it, I think it tastes better. But anyway, um, I never as, saw turkey soup. Huh? I have not seen turkey soup. Oh, it makes a great alternative. Actually, the no, turkey. I mean, not, not, not homemade. Actually, I mean, in a can. The turkey tastes better and way more tender, of course, in the soup, in the soup. than yeah. it would be if you roasted it. Huh? You know? But my mother used to do turkey drumsticks on the stove like a pot roast. You know, instead of using a, a top round or a bottom round or a rump roast, she would Rundle use broil. the drumsticks. And she would, you know, have gravy at the end, and uh, there'll be potatoes and carrots, and, and it's very good. I mean, it, it's definitely cheaper. I used to always eat the drumsticks. Well, my sister got uh, e uh, two extra packages of drumsticks because every year, most of the people that are in that invited ask for dark meat, uh -huh. and everybody wants a leg. I want a leg, so baby. So she says, you know what? To solve the problem, being that Every turkey only has two legs until Monsanto gets a hold of yeah, the DNA, DNA and, and screws with it. Nine you know. legs. Now, yeah, nine legged turkey. <laughs> she says, hey, all right, let me get more packages of drumsticks. And lo and behold, there was a lot more breast meat for yours truly, James P. Madonna. Oh, boy. Oh. I must what's that, uh, what's must that uh, my, at the carnivals and everything? What Jess, is that? Jesse the Body Ventura Boa. Hey, what is that uh, That turkey on a stick or something at, at these carnivals and stuff? Oh, that's tough as shoe leather, man. They, they roast, they barbecue a drumstick. The only way you, I would barbecue a drumstick or grill it is if I parboiled it. You ha just like uh, ribs. If you, if you don't have a smoker... You need to boil the ribs uh, at least 15 minutes prior to putting it on the grill, unless you have a smoker. I'm talking about the big rack, the Fred Flintstone ribs. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, otherwise I've had them where they were real tough. I went to a Renaissance festival one time, yeah. and I, I I I got a turkey leg, <laughs> and it was tough, man. It was. <laughs> but anyway, aside from that. Aside from that, yeah. As I was driving home Ooh. Thanksgiving. No, actually, let me start by when I left home to get to my destination for the holiday dinner, where my sister was. Um, I noticed that the uh, Kmart parking lot was full. Uh -huh. I commented in the car, um, explaining to my mother about the situation this year, where uh, supposedly uh, Walmart, Kmart, and Kohl's all... Forced, forced, not asked, forced their employees to work on Thanksgiving Day, and so therefore they could not could not have spent Thanksgiving dinner with their families. I'm sure the Waltons had a feast. Uh, the Walmart owners had a feast with their loved ones on Thanksgiving Day. But anyway, the retail workers of these three stores, which all have a permanent. Uh, uh, place in our Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you, you despicable evil scum, sleazy big retail of Walmart, Kmart, and Kohl's. The poor souls had to work. So, anyway, law, uh, fast forward. As I was coming home late Thursday night, uh, Guess what? The parking lot at, at the local Kmart was still full. Which means that these pe people, these employees were working a full shift. And the night shift was open. Which means the night people had to work. Despicable scum of the American retail industry. And um, also... Um, uh, I saw a little video of our governor, our beloved, dirigible, blimp governor, Chris, Krispy Kreme, Crisco Christie, was helping out at a soup kitchen. Hold that! That's in, our first article. In Newark, New Jersey, and uh, I don't know how much of the food the homeless people got with, with Chris Christie dishing it out, 
uh, and I'm sure he wasn't there very long. I, t I would take a wild guess and say he was there for a short period, just enough, to, photo just enough to get his rotund, just long enough to get his rotund body on camera, so he looks good. Uh, and uh, that was that, and uh, uh, Michelle Bachman made a real stupid statement. Uh, your gentleman in your thing said that your source My source was is no good. That's yeah, Michelle Bachman says that the Pilgrims uh, invited the, the, red man. The, the Red Man, the Native Americans, and... No, she and didn't say Native Americans, she said the Red Man. The Red Man invited yeah. the Red people or redskin, whatever she meant, whatever she meant yeah. and fed them, in other words, took care of them, fed them, and tamed the red man. The, the pilgrims savage. had to tame the red man, which means she's insinuating that the Native American, the indigenous people, were savages and they were like animals. They were Because yes. in order to tame something, something has to be wild and, and offensive or aggressive which means she was she was categorizing the Native Americans as animals, which is kind of is shocking and stupid, yes, but not too surprising because lately Republicans have been very brazen in what they have been saying lately. Well, I you know? asked the gentleman what was his source and whether he was stating categorically, whatever, that Michelle Bachman has not said stupid things other times? And that the woman posted the idiotic recent statement by Sarah Palin about about sending putting the Mexican immigrants in boats and sending them across, across the, the across the ocean back to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. And I Well had, there's a lot of beaches there, so there must be an ocean. Yeah, and I, and I had said it must be very difficult to navigate a boat through dry sand because some parts, many parts of the Rio Grande River is a skeleton, it's, it's dry. So, you know, I mean, and he was so insistent and he kept on needling me. I was gonna go off on him, uh, but when he kept on mentioning source, 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 source. Uh, just open the door crack, please. Yeah. The cat wants to come is in. someone behind you? Yeah, someone very vocal. Oh, you wanna go out? Oh, yeah. oh that was Steve. Yeah. Wanted to go out. I don't want him to go out, but he insists. Well, it's not that bad out right now. Well, he's sneezing. So I don't know if it's from the air or. Well, he was he was by the in the, in the warm warmest part of the, yeah. the, the, the office here. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, he was bugging me about providing a source, telling me that it's not the first time that I posted something inaccurate. Okay, I made one mistake. And of course, the redneck right winger remembers the one mistake. All they have to do is just ignore it. There's so much, there's so many other things on, on our group to pay attention to. We're talking about the Facebook group called Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, like our show. And, uh, but they only remember the, the little few and far between mistakes just like vultures you know like like they would nitpick President Obama on every little thing he does well as I said I mean it's, it's not like she hasn't said these things before she has a she has a track record that's of saying correct. very stupid things that's correct you know I go by patterns I follow patterns yeah. and um, Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman have a pattern of sounding like a horse's ass, exactly. S sounding imbecilic. I'm, I'm sorry, but same thing with uh, what's his name, Rick Rick Perry of Rick Texas. Perry, yeah. you know. Oops. You know. You know. I mean, uh, uh, hey, if it, it looks like if it looks, walks, sounds like a duck, it's, and a, duck. it's a duck. Anyway, the guy Fine. speaking of duck, the guy who's busting my balls looked like one of the Duck Dynasty uh, folk. He had a long beard, and um, that's all right. I mean, you know, the group is just just um, 
went over a thousand members, you know, it's thousand twelve, thousand and twelve, and the most I've ever had. And uh, you know, I'm happy that it's growing. But when you're like my sister told me, when you when you're growing and you're out there in cyberspace, be prepared to get heat from people. Well, of course. When you have that kind of exposure, be, be, just be prepared for it, and you know, um, and we are now, especially since I have tons of progressives on my side to back me up, which I'm, which I'm grateful for. Um, so, all right, so I talked about, oh, I, James P. Madonna, am proud to announce that I boycotted uh, retail Thanksgiving Day and Black Friday. I did not spend money on anything from retail. I boycotted it. Many others did, but many others did not. Yeah. And uh, the people that did not simply don't care. Well, I care about the retail workers, the Wal Walmart protesters, the people that were forced to work on Thanksgiving, and uh, I, I am officially boycotting big retail in terms of the chains, the stores. I mean, if I need something, I usually shop online. If I really need something, I'll get it online. But as far as uh, the whole pagan Christmas craze of being suckered into spending money that you don't have, I'm boycotting that. Um, I, I put out the Saturnalia information with the Christmas Lie by William J. Eisenman, uh, uh, Doctor of Divinity, is officially on our Facebook pages. Uh, and then the other Run guy... Run it every day. Huh? Run it every day. Yeah, I will. The guy, the conspiracy theory guy, said something a little surprising for such a uh, intelligent man. He says, who cares about what they did during ancient times? Let's deal with the with the here and now, with the present. And I had to explain to him there is a very big connection with the pagan traditions that have evolved into the modern day traditions of the phony Christian days of Christmas and Easter. There is a very direct connection. Well, there's also the, uh, the philosopher who said if you do not learn from history, you are bound to repeat it. Yeah, you're doomed to repeat it because you, you don't learn from your mistakes. Correct. But, I mean, if you go to the our Facebook, I mean, our YouTube channel, Mega Life 21, you will hear the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, Doctor of Divinity, teach you about the lies you've been told about Easter and Christmas and Christmas came from the, 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 the pagan holiday Saturnalia right Saturnalia and Brum Brumalia and Brumalia Saturnalia was the worship of the god Saturn yeah. the uh, it comes from the Roman Catholic Church which incorporated it into a festival to honor Jesus's birthday Jesus which nobody the, knows. But Jesus but never. Which, but we do know from the Bible itself that he was born in the fall, not in the winter. Because the shepherds, in Luke it says, the shepherds were still in the fields with their sheep. So it wasn't And that winter. does not happen in that area. Right. The rainy season is in, in December, and the sheep would not be in. They would be in corrals. And they weren't. They were still in the field. They were grazing. Still grazing in the field. Um, so he was born in the fall. Yeah. yeah, it's very important this time of year. We run it every year, just like they run those goofball Christmas movies uh, to, to make you feel bad, 
to lay a guilt trip on you so you go and spend all your money. I'm talking about a Christmas Carol and the and the uh, the Grinch. The Grinch who stole Christmas. Yeah, and the, well, the King Grinch, I renamed him. Yes, he stole As Christmas. As in New King Grinch, the King Grinch. Back in the 90s. The King Grinch <laughs> that stole Christmas. And of course, Christmas Carol with Ebenezer Scrooge, Scrooge is a way of making you feel guilty uh, uh, enough to go out and spend all your money. Yeah, ain't it funny that it don't make the uh, uh, the, the big bosses guilty though for you know trying to make their workers work on Christmas and and and, 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 and paying them a decent wage. They don't feel remorse. Oh no, no, no. They don't no. feel any remorse. No, no. They're sociopaths. All these CEOs That's and Republicans. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, also the Christmas carols, the Christmas songs were actually written for the big retail companies back in the day. They were, they were concocted. It was, it's all rigged. It's all a fantasy to get kids to nag their parents, to go out and spend their money at big retail chains. Um, you, you like my, uh, my, um, my Facebook profile front cover, it says, don't buy shit that you don't need. Stop buying shit that you don't need. Look, today's retail purchases will eventually become a future garage and yard sale <laughs> items. Or garbage. Or garbage. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, but those people went crazy on Black Friday to get that 50-inch color television set. What's the catch? You know? That's to be a catch. Uh, I saw that they did an investigation and they saw they, they had an item and it was like $20, $29 and change. It was that way a few weeks ago. It was that way a week ago. And it was the same on Black Friday. So where was the deal? What retail does in a sneaky way that they always do. Before they put something on sale, they jack up the regular supposedly retail selling price. They jack it up. And you think you are getting a bargain. Yeah, and they say 30% off. Yeah, 30% off of the jacked up price. Which leaves you leaves you back to the to the normal retail selling price. It's all a bunch of garbage. They're lying slime okay. dirt bags, Businesses I'm telling you. They're not giving you a break. And all those lemmings out there, all those jabroni lemmings. They take it all in. They're suckers, man. Mm -hmm. They're like P.T. Barnum says. There's, there's a sucker Sucking born every, every minute. minute. Every Ooh. minute or maybe every second now. And uh, they just got to have it because the hype excites them. It, it, it entices them. Scintillation. You know, I mean, they, supposedly they, they get all excited when they see an infomercial. Well, supposedly a lot of women, you know, enjoy shopping more than they do sex. So Yeah. You know. Well, it depends. Yeah, it depends on what kind of an old husband they got, or or whatever. If he's got bucks and and he spoils them, yeah, they do uh, shop a lot. But uh, it's uh, it's like um, they just believe the the hype in the advertisement when they see the word sale, bargain, uh, or anything like that. Now I'm so sick and tired at this time of year of seeing those fine jewelry commercials by Zales and Jared where they show you I mean of course they make the diamond ring uh, much more uh, uh, exciting than it really is because in excuse me in reality there's so many diamonds mined by the De Beers mining company in South Africa that they control the exportation the exporting of these diamonds because if they exported the amount that they mine if the flow was not held back the diamond and supply and demand would be cheap the diamond <laughs> same, is same not with oil and OPEC the diamond is really not a precious stone that you think it is uh, it, it's just not and it's controlled and then you have diamond grades and you know if you if you let's say you pay several thousand dollars for a ring and you, uh, you know, of course, the the female you buy it for is all excited <laughs> and in tears, and you know, and, and all, and, and there's all this the phony love and extra sex that's associated with giving her the Ooh. fine jewelry, and it's really 
like glorified prostitution. You're, you're paying, it's like paying the woman for sex. You give her the, the expensive diamond uh, uh, bracelet or necklace and she's all like, you know, flustered and everything. And, and in reality, if you try to sell that same fine jewelry several years down the road... Not several years. As soon as you walk out the showroom, just like a car. Like a car. A car, you know, it's depreciating when you you take it out yeah. of the showroom. The, the, the jewelry companies will give you a fraction of what you paid for exactly. it. Exactly. So where is the investment? Fine jewelry is not an investment unless you have a certified perfect or near perfect stone. You have to have the certification from the Gemological Institute of America. Or, or when it becomes an antique. Yes. You know, and, and people then want it. And it has to be in mint condition. condition, perfect condition. See, it's all a game, it's all a game. Like when they play with the stock market. Ah. It's a game, it's all rigged and, and people are so brainwashed because they put materialism at such a high priority and you saw what I posted last night about uh, you know the the uh, the coupon with the golden calf on it that talked about well, you, you might have missed it I missed it. they talked about materialism this time of year and 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 false false value false importance put on these on material possessions yeah. and, it, and it had Black Friday I think 50% off Black Friday, and it was like a, it was a big dig. Oh, I did see that. It's a big dig I did see for that. the retail industry and people getting sucked up into all this. Of course. Of in course. Instead of thinking about more spiritual things and, and, and things that are important. Well, you don't even have to be spiritual. I mean, just think about your brothers and your sisters in the world. People are starving. Yes. Kids are. Hunger, they are hungry every day in America and around the world. And a lot of spoiled kids and adults complain about their 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 gifts, and and oh. and, and you know, and they don't think anything of the suffering that that you know what. Flat out, they do not uh, really celebrate Jesus Christ. Of because course, because if they did, they would give to the poor children. They would turn around and go to uh, the post office and donate for for to what is it toys for tots? Hey, that, that toys for tots organization. It's a problem. Don't give to organizations. Give to people. You think toys? We should not have any poor in America. You think toys for tots no. finagles? They all do. And make a profit? They all do. It's a scam then. They all do. It's a legal scam. And besides, what the hell does a poor kid want a toy for Christmas? He wants food. Hey. He wants his father to have a job. If, his, if a kid goes to bed hungry, I think a meal will come way before the toy. Yeah. You don't want no stinking G.I. Joe. No. You know? Yeah, that's the that's the Christian thing to do. That's the way to honor Jesus, uh, even though his birthday was not December twenty fifth, yeah. December twenty fifth. But don't, that's but, the way to do it. But Christ was never in Christmas. But he never told people to honor anyone's birthday. That's correct. When he the, was alive, the Bible says that only Herod and Pharaoh care about birthdays. They were the, the Christian does not. They were the elitist fat cats of the time. A Christian is not supposed to revere or honor anyone's birthday. Correct. Yeah. You know? um, but anyway, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I didn't write it down. Uh, uh, but I Thanksgiving and Black Friday, um, 2014, uh, and I also another reason why I I boycotted Black Friday is uh, in support of the Ferguson, the Ferguson, Missouri protesters and uh, in support of them uh, against the system we have now, which is very racist and unfair. Did you happen to hear the news on that and, lately, the and, late news? Well, I will say one thing. 
they showed pictures of the police officer I call the murderer after the fact right after the fact and they showed a picture no of a, an orbital socket <laughs> fracture next to his face yeah. and a he did not have an orbital socket fracture and his life was not in danger and you have no right and no one has a right to kill anybody uh, or shoot them per se uh, uh, unless your life is in danger the man was unarmed therefore I don't care how his attitude was in the convenience store I don't care how belligerent or um, or aggressive he was the fact is you have no right to blow him away uh, just based on on that unless your life is threatened which in this case the cops life was not threatened so therefore it was murder in my book but that's All right, not say the what you're gonna it. say the assistant district attorney corrupted the grand jury they gave she gave them an old law that they should go by. The law was unconstitutional under the Supreme Court in 1980s. It was of no effect anymore. She gave it to them to read so that he could, back then, if someone fleed from an officer, he could kill them. Um. Didn't matter what the uh, the crime was. You Flee. could just kill them. It wasn't Shoot even them. it wasn't even resisting arrest. That's it correct. was somebody running the opposite way. That's correct. He could have done that. But and that law was overturned by the Supreme Court in the nineteen eighties. But she but influenced she gave the, exactly because you will find wow. if you go back and you investigate this situation grand juries rarely indict the cop. Rarely. But the point was that the, uh, then, then when uh, it, it was like three months later, she gave them the updated law, but made it of no effect, just that don't worry about it, pop, pop, pop. And one grand jury asks her, she says, does the Supreme Court's decision override Missouri law? Instead of saying yes, as it does, she said, don't worry about it. Really? And this is all documented? Yes, it is. Corrupted and when did this process. come out? What day? Uh, what's his name? Huh? It's on a video. Oh, okay. Forget the giant gentleman's name. So, um, it was a news. Uh, so, gentleman. this is proof yeah. that the government of the state of Missouri is racist. And they're not, it's not even a Confederate state. Missouri, I believe, was with the Union. And they're racist. Could you imagine if it was Alabama or Texas yeah. or Louisiana? Yeah. Or the, Georgia? Or the Tennessee with, with, with the great uh, Basil Marceau. Is from Brother Marceau, Basil, Mr. Basil, who wants to uh, round up anyone that looks uh, that has brown or tan skin, anyone that oh, looks boy. Spanish, round them all up and send them to Mexico. And if they have legal papers, they they should be able to get back in the U.S. That's his. If they had legal papers, why well, they wouldn't be deported in the first place? No, he just wants to round them up by. They don't know what the hell he wants. By profiling. In other words, yeah. what he's saying is he wants to allow racial profiling and deport anyone who looks Mexican. Yeah. Meanwhile, they could be born and raised in New York City, visiting he's, somebody. In he's an idiot. He's never thought this. Uh, Tennessee. Thought his uh, agenda through. Yeah, he doesn't think anything through like Michelle Bachman or exactly. Sarah Palin. Exactly, that's the problem with them people. They're not, they don't think. So this is, this is news to me, man. So this is proof yes. that no wonder these people are rioting. I don't blame them. Well, that's the truth. I mean, uh, it, it goes back to before the civil rights laws and etc. Uh, that's what they had to do to get the civil rights law passed. Now, um, they had a protest. It said that um, I found out that uh, Abraham Lincoln used 
the executive order once, and it had to do with the Emancipation Proclamation. No, it had to do with... Uh, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Uh, Well, oh, it said, the article said Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah, but it had to do with, he, 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 uh, didn't want him to get out of jail. Now, what the hell, there's a term for that. Show me the body, in, in Latin. Habeas Corpus. Habeas Corpus. Habeas Corpus. That's what he did. He nullified Habeas Corpus. Okay? His executive order. All right. Anyway, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I mean, they, they protest, there was a huge protesting in New York City, protesting Black Friday in, out of respect for the Ferguson uh, crisis. Um, and I, I'm, I, I salute the people of New York, the progressives in New York that care, that went out there and protested and boycotted Black Friday. I salute you, I salute you, and all the protesters throughout the country protesting the system that we have now, which is very biased and corrupt and wicked. Um, Still. Yes. Um, I want to say hello, greetings to my near dear friend uh, from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. I also want to say greetings to um, my uh, friend who uh, is very knowledgeable <laughs> with pro wrestling, Mr. Anthony Laura. I want to send greetings to the uh, uh, former WWE superstar and uh, trainer, personal trainer extraordinaire, Mr. Mr. Ken Thiessen of KT Training, Train to Win. Um, let's see. Greetings. Mario Petrus. To Mario Petrus, my partner uh, with the Holistic Health Talk. And uh, I want to also say, give my greetings and congratulations to one of our members uh, from the International Brotherhood of Polyvons, one of my groups, Mr. Jeff Bankins of Ohio, who set a new Guinness Book of World Records by pulling two large SUVs with his neck. Hi. So he and he and he, and he sent me the uh, certificate. He is he officially has the strongest neck in the world Yay. in his neck of the woods. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Jeff uh, uh, Bankins, uh, I congratulate you. Um, and um, of course, greetings to my, uh, my administrators, uh, Sashay Boyle and Jolton Joe Stebbins. DJ Jolt and Joe Stebbins. Um, Hank Baker, Hank Backer, the, the king of all, all alternative uh, fitness training. Um, and uh, either, that's about it. Either your uh, video you put up there last night didn't play properly for me or it took too long to get to the point one thing one or the other hit the refresh button no the one uh, about the guy who uh, tells the truth about why he got out of WWE oh uh, CM Punk CM Punk yes. oh try it again it is a YouTube video well is the in other words when he was on the podcast and told everything told the whole story it's from, you know, they posted it on YouTube, and that's what I, I put on the uh, page. Something went wrong last yeah. night with me. I tried to try to listen to it. Yeah, I um, well, the first day when it came out, I had trouble opening it, but then eventually, yeah. you know, usually I just I just hit the refresh button. But uh, I run into many glitches, especially on YouTube websites like uh, like Facebook. Uh, what is this Instagram? Please explain to me, what is this Instagram? It's the same thing like a Facebook or a, uh, Twitter. I don't know how they do it though. But so so what do I, I got to join? A, I got to join, I got to set up another account? Yeah. And another account, and yeah. another account, and another yeah. account? Yeah. 
Yeah. Until I have yeah. dozens of accounts yeah. I have to log into? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, fungu. As we say in Italian. Well, not everybody is on Facebook, you know? That's the point. Well, what, no, yeah, but I have Twitter. Shouldn't that be sufficient? Well, not everybody is on Twitter. Why did the jabronis pick Instagram over Twitter? But there must be some difference. There is a difference. Did you go to the homepage? No. no. I'll take well, a look. What the hell it is about? Pinterest too is the same. Oh private. crap! How many fucking accounts do I have to have? And if I'm not mistaken, well, you remember in the old days you had all these uh, I am uh, instant messaging programs like AOL, 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 AIO, yeah, 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 AIM, exactly. AIM. Yeah. Uh, uh, MRC, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, now that, that's gone. I mean, that's not in vogue anymore. The chat rooms, like the Yahoo chat rooms, that used to be hot. Not anymore. Hey, what's with that? Uh, I, I sent it to you because I could not fully understand it. It was the explanation, the definition of the uh, use of the hashtag, which is the pound sign, in front of something well, that you just, yes that's that's just a uh, that's just a uh, uh, it's you, you got to use the hashtag or you won't you, you won't hear the thing whatever the person wrote you gotta have the hashtag in front of it that's all in other words it's used in in blogging Twitter and oh it's Twitter it's, uses the hashtag so when you when you put a hashtag in front of something you tweet, you wrote, yeah. it it, uh, it it allows. Well, you you your your text is going to appear anyway. Uh, would I not without the hashtag? In other words, the hashtag is mandatory every time you, you write something. Write something on but Twitter, yeah. not on Facebook. No, no. Twitter. Twitter. Why couldn't they leave it alone? And you're only allowed 147 characters. Oh, so you could. Oh, so with the hashtag, you can you can add more characters. No, yeah. you're only allowed 147 characters. Yeah, they don't no matter allow what you write. Yeah, and then it, because it tells you so, if you're over the limit. So if you if you have a lot to say, for po post post three messages. Or yeah, two that's usually what they do. You know, usually... Or they use all them goddamn uh, 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 abbreviations. Acronyms? Abbreviations. I don't do acronyms, abbreviations. No. I don't do abbreviations. I don't know what they all are. Instead of Y-O-U, they'll use U. The letter U. Or, uh, I'm laughing my ass off. What is it? Uh, L-M-O. Yeah, well, the, some are more elaborate. You know, I yeah, mean, OMG, oh my God. Yeah, I know what that is. You know, sim simple ones I know, but I'm not getting into a whole different language, for God's sakes. But well, anyway, that's, what, that's why that came about, though, is because they only allow you so many characters to use. So you use the abbreviations, and you're allowed more characters. It's like a court stenographer right? or shorthand using shorthand. It's a shorthand. It's, yes. a, it's a form of shorthand. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of somebody else who's worthy of my greeting. Really? Uh, I mean, that would actually watch the show and hear it. Um, offhand, I, I really can't think of any... Uh, ah, my good friend from Montreal, Canada. Uh, our uh, uh, Canadian north of the border activist, Mr. Roberto Cheeky. Montreal, Canada. Hey, cheeky. Hey, cheeky. Happy holidays to you. I hope you had a great one. All right. Do they celebrate Thanksgiving up there? And I also am very proud of CM Punk, Mr. Phil Brooks, I believe his last name. Yeah, CM Punk for telling all and and uh, spilling the beans about the WWE and uh, Vince McMahon and Triple H. You're a courageous. Uh, a man of uh, dignity and integrity. Mm -hmm. I salute you. All right, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Oh, man, we were rather long-winded. We were long-winded. Uh, 
this post holiday special show. Yikes! You said you had you had one. Governor Christie and his wife Mary Pat dish out Thanksgiving meals on Wednesday at a soup kitchen in downtown Newark. Wow. Participating in what his administration is calling its season of service. Oh, so he's he's really going out of his way to do this. Oh yes. Standing under a tent outside St. John's Roman Catholic Church. And the homeless could stand under him as a tent. On Mulberry Street. During a steady snowfall. That's right, it did snow here. Christy and his wife handed out meals of uh, turkey. Toiki, yeah. Stuffing. Mashed potatoes. Corn. Probably GMO. I'm sure it is. And cranberry sauce. And there was no big funnel in Chris Christie's mouth for some of this food? Well, I, I there's a picture here. Ah, she's got three, too. Oh. He's got three meals in front of him in styrofoam, you know, containers. I thought they were for him alone. Oh, that's, that's a real, that's a real great Thanksgiving dinner. Doing all, you see what we do? You hey, see, we're Republicans, hey. Republicans are great. And we're, we're generous people. There was no dessert there. Usually there's something like applesauce or something in those containers. Or pumpkin pudding or something. Ah, uh, pumpkin pudding they could add, or even a slice of pumpkin pie. Could have, could have added a small Could have made a large pudding. amount of pumpkin pudding. Yeah. No dessert. Exactly. Because they're homeless, I guess. I no guess dessert. the Republicans feel they're lucky they got a dinner. Christy greeted those who came for the hot meal by saying, Happy Thanksgiving! Oh yeah, happy. Oh yeah, happy days for the homeless. Oh, excuse me. As his wife gave out plates of pie for dessert. Oh, okay, all right, you're off so the hook. So the plates were separate from okay. the Okay, you're off the hook this okay. time. Okay. <laughs> Before handing out the meals at yeah. the soup kitchen, Christy and his wife spent time outside working alongside volunteers who were putting the food into containers. I wonder how long he did all this. As many as 600 were expected to be served at the soup kitchen. Really? So this was Chris Christie's aerobic exercise for his... Yeah, hey, this is it. Moving the elbow. Doing, yeah, doing. You know, yeah. Doing fork curls, <laughs> fork and spoon. <laughs> Moving the elbow, yeah. Well, the event was one of more than a dozen that members of the Christie administration have participated in this week under the season of service program. The season of service. On Tuesday, oh boy. Lieutenant Governor Kim Guadango, however you pronounce her name, Guadango, Wangai, Let whatever. Me, well, well, it doesn't matter how you pronounce her name because she's Republican and therefore I don't care how I pronounce their names. She served hot meals at Oasis Haven for Women and Children in Patterson. Oh, uh, was like a woman shelter? Yeah. A woman's shelter? Yeah. Patterson is in bad shape. Oh. Camden is, in, is probably the worst that in is the country. The worst, yes. Christie, who visited 37 states in the run up to the November 4 elections while campaigning for fellow Republicans, as the, <coughs> excuse me, the leader of the Republican Governors Association said he plans to spend Thanksgiving at home. In Mendham. That's His where family plans to host nearly 30 people for dinner. 
Thirty rich friends, I bet. Menham. Nottingham? <laughs> I don't know exactly where Menham is. It's probably not too far from uh, Trenton. It would have to be, you know. It, I bet it's just a, it's a rich su suburb of Trenton, New Jersey. Because he's from Morris County. Ah, well then it's probably there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe they either. kept their Morris County home. And, and well, of course he kept their home. And he sleeps. Uh, maybe he's got a but place. But wouldn't it be better to be in the mansion and you know drum thwack it, and and have a chef, a, 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 you know, a professional chef serve the meal? Oh, so the the governor of New Jersey has the option of living in. Trump flack it. <laughs> Whatever. The, the governor's mansion. Land, uh, um, um, South Fork Ranch. Let's just call it that from Dallas. And, uh, oh! and have servants on, on the taxpayer's dole. Probably Look at this. servants take the care of you. The first lady will be doing the majority of the cooking. What do you mean? Oh, are you talking about his wife? Yes, Mary Pat. For 30 people? Come on. I think... Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Come on. No way. No way is she cooking Thanksgiving for 30 oh, people. Oh, Jesus. The rest of the sentence. Although Christy added, the effort would be a combo. So he's going to hell. He's going to help? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to lift... He's going to lift one bowl of cranberry sauce, bring it to the table, and sit down. This is what he said while preparing the mashed potatoes. I'm sure he's not mashing them. And when asked how he manages the holiday after his weight loss surgery in 2013, yeah. Christie said it's pretty simple. You eat what you can, and then you stop. Well, in his case, eating what you can means eating a whole dump truck full of food. Well, you know, with the surgery, you can only eat like three three ounces at a time. Oh, yeah, that surgery, yeah. was it gastric bypass? Yeah. It's, it's really doing wonders for Chris Christie. Yeah, really. Sarcasm. Dump thwack it. Drum thwack it. Drum thwack it? Yeah. Where's drum. my friggin' thing, man? Here it hey. is. Hey, 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 my drum thwack it. I'm playing with my drum thwack it. Right. Speaking of Republicans and Christie, there is no such thing as trickle-down economics. It's all siphon up to the fat cats, to the uh, top 20% economics. Siphon up, never any trickling down. You hear that, you imbecilic uh, tea-bagging uh, oh, rednecks? Want if you want a better job, go out and find it. Oh yeah, go out and find one. Yeah. Just go, go get one. Get two jobs. Get three jobs. Yeah, yeah. Like there's so many jobs out there. Okay. It's a siphon, right? For those imbeciles that don't know what that was. You know, uh, corporations are going to be in a little trouble uh, soon because yeah. uh, the wages in China are going up. Oh yeah, gee, where would they outsource exactly. to now? Exactly. Uh, 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 the Eskimos, the Inuits, mm, possible, possible. Build factories up there. Possible. They're gonna run out of third world countries, eventually. Uh, you want to hold this uh, next one here? You yeah. Got, we got five minutes. You got a short one? No, unless we do a uh, change of pace with uh, your favorite, uh, Amy Dickinson. All right, let's lay a little Amy Dickinson on everybody. I met my boyfriend in my first year of college. No other man had ever treated me with such respect. Oh, yeah, no, this guy's a dreamboat. He's At a perfect, first, perfect gentleman. Our physical relationship was great. Oh, that means she was, uh, they were pumping like machines. We've been in a monogamous, monogamous Monoga relationship for five years. We own a home together and, for the most part, get along great. Good. Happy for them. Unfortunately. Uh-oh. <laughs> I am sexually unsatisfied. She's like a, a nymphomania? For about two years now. 
Oh, so it, it started off with a with a with a bang, with a blast, and, and it fizzled out. The the uh, the the um, they did not put any new logs on the fireplace. I tried to initiate sex regularly, but nine times out of ten he pushes me away. Yikes. The sexual side of our relationship has fizzled out. They have to try new things. And it's attra affecting other aspects of our relationship. We've talked about it many times and he swears it has nothing to do with me. He says he's happy in our relationship, but he's just not into sex. He's happy if she stays away from him and shuts her mouth. <laughs> I occasionally catch him pleasuring himself. You mean he's waxing the old bishop? And an hold eight on. for chess. All right, hold on, my, uh, the shillelagh. He's sh shellacking the shillelagh? <laughs> to online porn! Ah, he's used to seeing hot chicks now on, on, on the internet. Ah, oh, he's getting, he got desensitized to her. Oh. I've asked him what I can do to make him attracted to me. What did she do to herself? Like he is to the women in those videos. Is, did she get fat? And does she wear uh, unattractive uh, 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 clothing? He says I should dress up in lingerie. Oh, James, I, say, I swear. I'm, I'm, t I'm starting to... I'm starting to uh, gain some of my, my friend Ozzy Buko's qualities. My good friend, the wizard Ozzy Buko. I've done this, but it actually made it worse. Maybe because when I do, he still rejects me. Maybe she needs to change her eating habits and start working out. It really hurts. Yeah, but it's, there's always two sides to every story. We are both in our late twenties. I am not satisfied with having sex once a month. Oh, they're young. They're young, and she's pushing. He's pushing her away. But he is. Wow. Friends of mine have said the honeymoon period is over, but it doesn't mean we should break up. Yeah, I have something to say when you're done, but finish. Does every physical relationship fizzle out like this? Uh, many feel, do, many do. I feel like I can't be my best self when I'm holding in all this anger. What should I do? You know, sometimes the stress of today's modern life with the money problems, lack of money, you know, fighting over money, unfortunately. Uh, uh, the kids constantly clawing at you. Hold on. Constantly clawing at you and tugging at you and demanding every waking moment from you. You know, all this takes its toll on uh, the sensual part of the uh, relationship. Well, what does uh, kids involved here? No indicate. Right, what does she have to say? The, the, the man just likes porn better than her. Could be the imagination of, you know, like what Spock said on Star Trek, uh, desiring something in thought can be more exciting than actually having something it, in yeah. reality. Yes. He used different words, but it's the same thing. Let's refresh. Hit the refresh button. Your guy is not into sex, except when he's alone with his laptop. He and see, then he is. Because he sees hot chicks. He claims his lack of interest has nothing to do with you. Except it would be great if you dress more like a porn star. She's got to, she's got to adapt and, 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 you know, and watch it with him. You comply and he rejects you. Sexual relationships are bound to fizzle if one partner finds a sexual outlet that interferes with the connection between the couple. Naturally. But you got to, monogamy is very difficult. You have to work hard on it. You got to take care of yourself. You can't let yourself go. That goes for men, too. Maybe the guy's just into quickies. I can't hear you, man. Quickies. Oh, she, in other words, she's, uh... The porn is quick. The... 
Maybe he doesn't want to do a lot of foreplay and maybe she's maybe she, she and expects that. too much romantic uh, foreplay before the actual sexual foreplay. Maybe it's he's just too tired to go through that whole rigmarole, you know. Maybe she, he wants the quickie because the quickie is all he has energy for, perhaps. perhaps. He's, a young, he's a young guy. Perhaps your guy would be willing to share his porn with you. So you could at least have parallel pleasures. Not like parallel parking. You know, actual, better than that. Parallel pleasures. Actually, they probably both live in parallel universes. Sounds like it. <laughs> you seem to be making all of the effort to have an experience with him that he does not want to have with you. Sexual relationships are not universally destined to fizzle. It doesn't have to be this way. A relationship counselor would help. But if he won't make any effort, things will not improve. Yeah, it takes two to dance the tango. I, I watched the Honeymooners Marathon and I also watched March of the Wooden Soldiers, even though I knew the whole movie by heart. And uh, and uh, uh, Wizard of Oz was on, but I can't I can't stand that hammy acting. I heard uh, somebody in the house was watching Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. My God, what hammy acting! I think that the I think I saw sickening me, Scarlett O'Hara. That the uh, Burt War lion suit is up for sale. Oh really? Auction, I bet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That should that should go to the Smithsonian Institute. You know, you know what they were looking for in Los Angeles in in the uh, studio where they did the filming for the Wizard of Oz. They were looking for the actual yellow brick road. Nobody ever found it. The actual yellow brick road. That they said that that would command a very high price. <coughs> Probably. And I, and I, and I, I would say shoes? yes. I would say yes, huh? What about the red shoes? I think the, the red shoes they have. What about the funnel on top of the guy's head? They, the Margaret Hamilton, the Wicked Witch of the West, her hat. She donated her hat, the hat, when she was alive. Yes, or that would that yes. But the actual yellow brick road. So anyway, we're gonna break now for lunch. We'll be back for the second half of the show. Uh, we're we have, going to join our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for his words of wisdom and promo. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye.
Sonny Boy knows what he's doing. I saw that episode when Ralph Cramden found the suitcase full of counterfeit money on the bus. Uh -oh. Sonny Boy knows what he's doing. Anyway, we're back. Thank you, William H. Morrill III, for doing promo and sharing your words of wisdom. Um, we're back. How the hell are you? you okay? Full. Well, it's, it's better I'm to be. Full. It's better to be a little too full than to go hungry. Good. Well, yeah, of course. Now I have no room for the pot. You have the pumpkin pie later, like I said before. Gonna have to. Oh. So, would it would be funny if somebody baked the pie and the crust was made from rye? You know, it would be pie on rye. If I knew you were coming out of big, big cake, big cake. No white sugar, though. Don't use white sugar. Use coconut sugar or stevia. Or is it stevia? Stevia. Stevia. And xylitol. Xylitol. Is now in vogue too. I was in the vitamin shop one time and uh, somebody was asking uh, about uh, uh, chitosan, which is the the uh, exoskeleton of shellfish they, they get it from. And uh, chitosan, so one of the executives, smartass, comes over and he says, uh, it is pronounced cheetosan. Get the fuck out of here, cheetosan. What about chitosan? Nope. That's where they get chondroitin. When, when you see arthritic formulas with glucose, glucosamine chondroitin. sulfate and chondroitin, cotton pick and droitin, they get it's derived from shellfish. You know, just like the krill oil is from krill, which is a very tiny shrimp that, that resides in cold water. Eaten by a big mammal. Yeah, and salmon. That's how salmon get their pink flesh. From the oh, I thought that was from flamingos. From the krill. Well, flamingos eat. They no, excuse me, they, from shrimp. They shrimp. claim flamingos. What, what they eat makes them pink. And um, well, you know the and the shrimp eat algae, which contains the astaxanthin, very powerful antioxidant, astaxanthin. Which uh, is may, is a pigmentation, which causes the pink. Because the shrimp are not pink until they're cooked. Well, these are pinkish. And I, flamingo, I uh, don't eat no stinking cooked shrimp. No, no. Well, the uh, the the astaxanthin from the marine algae that yeah the krill eat, and um, so I wonder if omega three is naturally present in the vegetation that the krill eat. I know there, I know that most of the omega-3 comes from an animal source, marine source. Uh, then you have vegetable source. Right now, chia oil is number one in veggie omega-3, which is alpha linoleic acid, is omega-3 in, in vegetable source. But the problem is, I believe it only converts into EPA, not into DHA. Mm. You have to consume the animal source to get the DHA, which is very important for the brain. You hear that, Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman? You need a lot of DHA. It's, you know, it's funny too, because she's up there in a uh, in a in a in a country that a country, a state that uh, depends on fish. Well, there's plenty of salmon up there in Alaska. Uh -huh. So what's her excuse for being stupid? Just being in Alaska? Uh, I don't think so. You know, Bachman is from Minnesota, right? Yeah. Could be the cold. Hey, Jesse Ventura. Brain from, freeze. Jesse Ventura's from Minnesota, and he's a thousand uh, times go. more intelligent than Michelle Bachman. There you go. Something else. Al Franken is uh, is from Minnesota, Minnesota, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Frankenberry, that we, we, we 
never gets interviewed by the media. Students at a Southwest Florida high school. Southwest? Oh, okay, like like Tampa, Sarasota. No, told Sa Sarasota, N Naples. Told administrators. Fort Myers. That two teens tried to recruit them into a prostitution ring. Um, what gender? Mixed? And one 15-year-old boy had been pimping out girls. Gee, are they, are they that slutty nowadays? By Tuesday, detectives in Venice, Florida, a small community in Sarasota County, had charged three people in connection with the case. Very entrepreneurial young man, huh? A 15-year-old boy? Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty... Uh, He's pretty slick for a 15-year-old to start a business like that. 17-year-old girl? Well... We're charged with human trafficking. So she was the, probably the world's youngest madam. And a 21-year-old man was charged with Madame. sexual battery. Sexual battery? On a victim older than 12. Oh boy. Police say. Oh boy. He paid a 15 year old girl from Riverview High School $40 and a bottle of alcohol for sex. The idea to form a prostitution ring gained traction through a series of online messages between the two, August 13th. According to investigators who searched the pair's Facebook accounts, messages included a business plan to pimp hoes with rates such as 50 to 70 dollars for oral sex and a hundred dollars for sex with a virgin. Yeah, but that's only a one-shot deal. It's a one-shot deal. You gotta go out uh, uh, prospecting for new virgins, unless you, of course, lie. The cuts for the prostitutes was forty percent. In the messages, they discussed prices, ages. Wait a minute, the prostitutes only got 40%? But they're doing all the work. Aww. They must be Republican kids pimping out. Yeah. Because in the capitalistic system, as I say so many times, the worker has to produce more for the boss than he's paying, than the boss is paying. But it has, uh, I mean, if usually a fair split is 60-40 person doing the work gets the 60. The agent gets either 40, 40 or 10 percent. It used to be 10 percent. Well, talent agents. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It used to be 10 percent. Now it ain't anymore. I think it's still 10 with talent agents though. But anyway. In the messages they discuss prices, ages, Prospected prostitutes and details of the operation. LOL! Ha ha! We need to start a business! Ha ha ha! Wrote Alexis Nicole D. Armas, the 17 year old who was charged. What a slut. D. Armas was able to persuade Megan to have sex with John Mosier, 21, for 40 bucks and a bottle of alcohol. Bottle of hooch. A hoochie with a bottle of hooch.
After seeing how easy it was, the teen girl worked to recruit more girls to have sex with clients. You see all the trouble uh, Miley Cyrus caused, influencing all these these young females. The 15-year-old boy and Diarmas used the money to buy drugs and booze. Oh, to to further increase their brood, right? Their stock as bait. They use it as bait. No, they use it for themselves. Oh, they pissed out. They pissed away their profits. Correct. Not very savvy business people. No. The Armas did not have a phone to coordinate business, so she used the Facebook Messenger service. Oh. Uh. As well as apps on her tablet, including Kink, Kink, K I K, and Snapchat. See, there's two more. I Twitter and. Yeah, 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 I mean, you, usually, yeah. usually, pimping is done with a cell phone. You know, they, uh, what was that? In call, out calls, whatever you want to call them. No, it was involving Craigslist. Uh, there is no, they don't allow, uh, uh, there is no more adult uh, section yeah, or know, adult oriented uh, they were, uh, advertisements I, on Craigslist. I think it was human trafficking or something. Yeah. But anyway, that's going on and they caught Mr. Craig. The guy who started it, Craigslist. He was getting money? Well, he's obviously still getting paid. He's still, you know, the boss or something. Yeah, but if they didn't catch them, they would not have put pressure. Well, they wanted him to stop it. And he, you know, didn't. He didn't want to, and he didn't want to talk to them or whatever, so. Yeah, well, they it's not there anymore. That You know where they all are? On, on Backpage. They all, they all moved to Backpage. Dot com, which is similar to Craigslist. Not as well known, but, you know. Hmm. Neighbors were surprised to hear the house near them in a quiet subdivision in Sarasota housed an alleged leader of a prostitution ring. They said the family moved in about a year ago and kept to themselves. They leave us alone and we leave them alone. said a neighbor, neighbor, Carol Bieber, who saw police come to the house recently. I just can't believe it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of incredible for that age to be running that kind of a business. Police said none of the sexual activities they are investigating happened on school grounds. Oh, the fact is they happened. It happened and the state of Florida has the right to put a stop to it. Yeah. You know? Speaking of Florida. Florida. A Florida woman who came forward Thursday became the fourth in recent weeks to say Bill Cosby gave her pills that made her feel groggy and then forced himself sexually upon her. Yeah, he gave them Mickeys. Maybe he wanted to uh, introduce these women to Fat Albert. Hey, 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 hey you want to meet Fat Albert? <laughs> you know. Ther Theresa Serignis. Hey. Now 57 and a nurse in Boca Raton said the television icon raped her in 1976 when she was 19 years old. Following a show, following a show in Las Vegas. What was she, um, how did she run into, how did she meet Cosby? She said she went backstage when the two were alone. Cosby gave her two pills and a glass of water, saying, Take these. My next memory is clearly feeling drugged, being without my clothes, standing up. She said Bill Cosby was behind me, 
having sex with me. So well, he, you like doggy. So he didn't even. He didn't even like to uh, wait for groupies to offer themselves. No, 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 no. He went. He he went right for the meat and potatoes. You know, he just he drugged them and. He obviously liked the cadaver-like, you know. Oh. Where they're not uh, in participation mode. No, it's just. He's just doing. Two two tits, a hole, and a heartbeat, pretty much. It's just. Yeah. Like a masturbation toy. There you go. With with with, with a, a love warm, doll. A love doll with with a with a warm feel to it. Cosby's spokesman David Brokaw said. Excuse me, did not respond to a request for comment. The allegations by Serignis and three others are similar. Signoris said she reported her allegations to the Philadelphia Police Department in 2005. Also Thursday, the high point Enterprise reported that High Point University in North Carolina has removed Cosby's name from its board of advisors. You know, Bill Cosby is the one responsible for removing the little rascals off the air. He bought all of it, the rights to it, I guess. And he, and felt, he felt it, were, it was racist, you know, uh, 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 making uh, buckwheat and stymie mispronounced words and all that. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. You know? Give a bad uh, reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that, 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 was, that was the times. You know, you had Al Jolson singing uh, in blackface. Well, Mammy. that's because if the, a play or something needed a black person, they had a white person play the part. Right. Amos Just and like Aunt in the old days Amos. with uh, Shakespeare. Yeah. No women on the stage, so a guy played the part of the women. You know. Mm. That's how it was in those times. Hey, See, what does drag. it say what does it say on the uh Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal? Yeah, right. For our country? Unless you, except women and blacks. Except women and blacks. If you're rich and white, you're created equal. Yeah. And they were slave owners, the founding fathers. So, yeah, I heard Amos and Andy uh, were oh, white. I loved Amos and Andy. They were white. Uh, on the radio, they were. On the radio. When they, they were, were on white. television, they were black and white. Black and black. Yeah. But they were, uh, even like blacks in movies were very stereotypical at the time. Yeah. The servants. The whole yeah. situation. Like, remember Ro uh, Rochester on the Jack Benny show? They acted like that. They they behaved that way. There's a uh, Norman Rockwell. Uh, I guess it's Saturday night. Saturday. Uh, what the hell was the name of the magazine? Saturday something, where he did all the. Uh, Saturday Night Live. No, oh. the magazine. Saturday. Saturday something, where he did all the artwork for it and everything. Anyway, he had one picture up there where it was this this kid, and the kid was sitting on a train, I think it was, a train, and this black servant on the train is all in white and serving the kid. Yeah. Now, in those days, it would have never been the the opposite. The kids serving the black. See? Blacks had their place. Yeah. That's how simple it was. It's like women had their roles mm -hmm. in the media and society in the movies. You know, uh, Asians, they, they, they were racist towards Asians. They stereotyped Asians back then. Uh, I mean, Charlie Chan was a, was a white guy. But he was a very smart white guy. A Jewish, uh, I mean, uh, white guy played Charlie Chan. Charlie I think Chan. number one son was Asian, though. You know, but they 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 stereotyped them. Of course, that's what the, they that's give. What they gave them buck snaggle teeth and buck teeth and with thick Coke bottle eyeglasses. Joe Jitsu. Joe Jitsu. Yeah, if you <laughs> if you go on YouTube, you could f just type in Joe Jitsu 
car, uh, cartoon, cartoon, Dick Tracy cartoon, and you'll see what I mean. Go Go Gomez was stereotype. You know, be, you know, be between uh, assignments when Dick Tracy called Go Go Gomez for an assignment. Go Go. He was always asleep under a sombrero, always. <laughs> That's all he did. So you know. So what are they trying to say? They were lazy. The, uh, the obvious, yeah. I see. Meanwhile, they're extremely hard workers. Well, I think they long were very, hours too. Very smart for taking a siesta too, in the middle of the day. I take a siesta sometimes in the middle of the day. So do I. More times it's at night, but, <laughs> you know. Well, now that the sun goes down early. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. continuing. Several days after the recent midterm elections, Mitch McConnell, the incoming Republican majority leader and other GOP leaders brought Republican hypocrisy to an all-time high. Doesn't they claim me. Doesn't surprise me. Yeah. that President Obama should respect the results of the election, move to the political center, and cooperate with Republicans in Congress. In other words, let them take over, lock, stock, and barrel. Thank you! Uh, concede. Like um, Al Gore did when uh, G.W. Bush won his re-election. Just give up. They like that. Just they like give that. up. Yeah. And concede. The GOP would have us ignore its own obstructionist actions of the last six years and place the blame for Washington's gridlock solely on the president. In January 2009, on the very evening, the day Obama took office, the GOP leadership plotted to defeat every Obama proposal or initiative. Well, then the Democrats should filibuster, veto pen, and executive order them nonstop. Soon after, the Democrats should. Uh, Republicans in Congress rejected every compromise offered by Democrats and voted virtually unanimously just three votes, yes votes, in opposition <clears throat> to the stimulus bill. Wasn't, wasn't I right about about uh, how this all this bullshit compromising that some Democrats always talk about will never work? Bipartisanship, efforts, compromising. It won't work. I, I've said it many times in the past. Because the Republicans believe that compromise is defeat. Yeah, they're, they're not, they're, they don't want to compromise. So why should you, the progressive or the Democrat, want to compromise? They're not willing. It takes two to dance the tango. They're not willing to do it. I knew that right along. Even though the economy was on the verge of a total collapse. On health care reform, the GOP again rejected every offer of compromise and voted in lockstep, regardless of the fact that the leg legislation's key feature, the individual mandate, was once a Republican proposal. For six years, Republicans have ignored the results two presidential elections. But now, they have done it about face. Because less than a third of eligible voters in the relatively small number of red states that voted for Mitt Romney in 2012 have given the GOP 
control of the Senate, they believe that this is the only mandate that matters. Hey, um, the American voter who in the last election November 4th, they voted to seal their own fate there. They, um, they cut their noses off to spite their face. They voted against their best interests. You know, they're, they're, they're just fools, imbeciles, nincompoops, idiots, whatever you want to call them, morons. Uh, and a lot of them are traditional blue states that voted for the Republicans. New Jersey, Wisconsin, it's its absurd, it's incredible. They, um, it's like, it's like marching off, like a lemming, uh, when they when they go off the cliff into the ocean and drown themselves, right? Or, like some unseen force. Yeah, it bewitches. It's influence. Some unseen evil force is influencing the masses of America to do this, like they're bewitched. Bothered and bewildered. Uh, um, yeah, spellbound. How much interest in an adult child's sex life is normal? My mother seems obsessed. I hooked up with a girl Hook up. a couple of months ago on a Friday. She spent months of the weekend with me. Oh, that's nice. We both knew it wouldn't go further than that. Oh, really? The whole weekend, and, and it didn't it didn't blossom into any rendezvous. Turns out she works with my mom. The mother will probably interrogate her. You know how mothers are. By chance, found out about the weekend. By chance? Yeah, by chance. Mom. <laughs> has been interrogating her for every detail, every now, chance she gets. Now, I did not read this article before. Do I have intu intuition old James P. Madonna or what? By golly. And my mom likes to drop details into my daily life. What did she to say? To embarrass me. He banged me. Your son plowed me. He played hide the salami. How much interest is apparent supposed to show. Mine knows my favorite position and intimate interests. Really? That's, that's a little much, isn't it? Ugh, tell you, tell your mother. Icky. Icky. That's icky. That's, that's creepy. Ugh. You don't tell your mother. A girl. No, no, the girl told the mother. That's even worse. No, it's, it's worse all the way around. You know, a girl or boy, you don't tell the mother about any detail about your sexual activities. That's not right. It's inappropriate. It's gross. It seems your mother is not only nosy, pain in the ass, but also has a sadistic sense of humor. Yeah, I would say so. She's getting a kick out of embarrassing you. Tell her to lay off! Yeah, lay off her son getting laid. Because what she is doing is inappropriate. I and it's not. making you uncomfortable. All the words I said before, I swear I did not read this article. If she can't respect your wishes, then realize it's time you put some distance between you and your mama. Listen, a nosy person can only gather information if they, they have a willing subject, you know, and, but, it, but it's just downright strange and creepy for parents to know the details of their children's mm -hmm. sex activities. Mm -hmm.
And to prevent this from happening in the future, find out more about the chicks you hook up with. Because this last one seems like a bird. Oh, she's a singing canary, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like oh. an African gray parrot. She, she can't wait to, to repeat things. Pluto did it. Pluto did it. Oh, yeah. Pluto did it. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> Pluto did it. You know, I mean, I know that, you know, they women say they don't like a man that kisses and tells. Oh, but baby. women sure go into detail with their female friends. Oh, baby. Women go into detail. Alright. So. I got a shorty here, okay? Okay, then we'll call it a day, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we were very long-winded in, uh, in the monologue, the opening monologue. A watercolor of Munich's old city hall believed to have been painted by Adolf Hitler. He, he was an artist, he did paint. A century ago, was sold for $162,000 in an auction in Germany on Saturday. Yeah, you know, part of history. Catherine Wheeler, director of the Wheeler Auction House, in Nuremberg said the work attracted bidders from four continents and went to a buyer from the Middle East. The painting, which had been expected to fetch at least $60,000, was sold by a two sisters whose grandfather purchased it in 1916. Well, I can't even sell my paintings for $500! And they're excellent watercolor paintings by the Reverend Dr. William mm. J. Eisman. Yeah, you, um, you know, it's talent, not just art, artwork, but the entertainment industry, a lot of it is luck, knowing the right people. Name. You know, having that connection that gives you your first break. You know, being at the right place at the right time, man. That's a, I always say networking, uh, word of mouth networking is very important. Uh, my friend uh, Marie uh, Balabat, she the one that draws Philippine Filipina. She's um, outstanding at drawing, but that's what she does. She draws, but she she draws in detail. Uh, she has um, um, an account on Tumblr. Um, it's not named after her name. It's something like uh, "Honey, I'm Home," but it's oh. like multiple letters. You know, I I just don't remember the exact amount. But she's outstanding at in drawing stuff but she also is um, has been very lucky in getting uh, customers and uh, even people that want to commission her mm -hmm. to do stuff but you know there are many so-called starving artists out there just like there are many so-called starving actors and actresses and singers and such and musicians and uh, but not everybody in the spotlight is necessarily the very best at what they do. Well, as I always say, a lot of them are lucky. To people who are a little bit insecure, I tell them, you know, what if Bob Dylan were to listen to the people around him that said, you can't sing for shit? Well, get out of the business. Arnold Schwarzenegger was told you'll never make it as an actor. I think it was w William Morris Agency says you have a funny name and a funny accent. You'll never make it. Don't even try. There you go. There's a lot of uh, what do they call them naysayers? 
t there are tons of them that, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know if it's sour grapes. Well, they never made it, so they don't want to see you make it. The point is, you do not listen to them. That's the You point. just continue doing what you, you do, do best. That's, that's it. Right. You just say, that's what we do here. You know, I mean, uh, we know all the stupid crap gets goes viral. We know that. But you know what? We're still reaching a lot of people. A lot of people are joining our groups. Uh, our videos on, on the Internet get responses. A lot and, of people uh, need to get the, the newsletter. Well, like, yeah, you, yeah, you got to... Yeah, the, the, the most important way to join our organization, you got to get newsletter censored. You got to subscribe to it, but uh, to support this work. But Gary No said it when he had Jesse Ventura on last. You know, as long as we reach some people, then he's happy. You know what I mean? Make a make make a uh, make uh, make a difference for some people mm -hmm. here and there. Well, he reaches a lot of people because yeah, uh, I know he does. Uh, his uh, his website is is devoured every day. Yeah, you know what's weird? I went to his UStream channel, and because he's on UStream, some of his uh -huh. videos, and I mean, he's got a YouTube channel that's loaded with videos, but his uh, his UStream is where he goes live, and uh, it's definitely upgraded. It looks way better than it did before. But it's there's nothing there. Huh? Not even not not a profile picture, not not one video of a show. Nothing. Oh, well, what about archived? Nothing. Nothing. Well, when I say nothing, I mean nothing. So what the hell is that? I don't know what jabronis are working for him. If he has interns working for him. I don't oh, know. you didn't remind me. I wanted to speak on interns today because. Dr. Richard Wolf was doing on his show today about interns. Yeah, the new, I think, in my opinion, it's the new scam for free labor. That's correct. And what I was saying in past shows that me and Dr. Bill did is what happens is like with academia, you have the graduating students that are offered school credits or college credit by working part time for some employer until they graduate and these interns are providing free labor for these employers until they graduate then they get another semester of interns they graduate then they get another semester of interns so these semester these interns are students that are using their working hours for credits for school credits and they're giving free slave labor that's correct providing free slave labor to the companies and, and it's the biggest scam aside from privatized prisons in my opinion yeah is that basically what yes, you're going to say yes yes they, they it's the uh, one of the biggest scams uh, uh, to uh, 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 just like outsourcing h1b outsourcing h1b visas right. all schemes uh, it's a scam privatized prisons internship right all scammy poos. Thank you for right. reminding me. Yeah. They're all scams that corporate America uses to increase their profit margin by underhanded tactics based on greed, corruption, yeah. greed. Yeah. Because, and they're allowed to do it and yes. get away get away with it because the United States government is bought and paid for. That's correct. And on that note, like Jesse Ventura always says, stay vigilant. Subscribe to the newsletter, Censored. Uh, we're back on the Pirate Radio Network as Hard Hitting Truth. We're back on Internet Talk Radio. Uh, everything's working fine within that area. And uh, we have a YouTube channel. We have we have many links. Actually, finding everything we do is not difficult. All mm -hmm. you have to do is go to your browser and type in Mega Life Twenty One, and everything shows up. There you go. There you go. So 
Have a, have a, uh, a good, safe, enjoyable week. Um, don't get trampled by uh, crazy shoppers. Uh, try to shop for bargains online. Quite often, the shipping is free. Go to Google Shopping like I do. Do a search. Boycott the big retail chains. Mm. Across the board, all of them. Don't buy what, what you don't need, but boycott the fat big retail chains. We gotta, we gotta do this out of respect for the retail worker that is abused, overworked, underpaid, and forced to work on holidays. Mm. They're people too, just like us. They wanna spend holiday time with their loved ones, just like anyone else. You know what I mean? Well, corporations are one of the biggest uh, uh, bad things for families. Yeah. I mean, Break just... up families. Hey, the, if you want the job, you'll have to move here. Oh, yeah. Republicans say, you know, they tell you to relocate if you yeah. can't find a job. Oh, yeah. Just pick up and, and yeah. move to a strange area. That's it. Leave your wife and children and, and go to Pennsylvania to get a job. Right. Or like my uncle told me, go move to Silicon Valley, California. How are you supposed to pay for your living expenses while you, when you move to a new area? They don't care. See, they don't, they don't think... It's not part of the equation. They don't think That's of the correct. entire solution. That's correct. Because it's, it's not a complete because solution. the entire solution would be bad for their business they're trying to defend. So, so the, what they're doing is they're trying to blow you off and sweep you under the carpet. They're trying to make it your problem. Right. You're the one who has the problem. Like, in other words, great. if you're homeless in... In, in North or South Carolina or Florida, you get arrested. If you if you feed if if you're a homeless person sleeping on a bench, you're arrested. You're a homeless person going into a garbage or just you know being a, you're arrested for vagrancy. If somebody feeds you, they're arrested. Yeah, even if he's a clergyman. Even if he's a, like the the 90 year old minister in yeah. Florida, yeah. South Florida, yeah. it's like. It's war, it's class warfare against the poor. Yes! And the poor did not start it. All right, say so long. So long, people. Get your acts together. Why did they say so long, not so short? So long? I don't know. Did John Holmes start that the little slogan? So long? Oh, no. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.